All right, so it's time for another major topic in physics. We finished one. This is another one. It's called thermal physics. All right, so what's involved with thermal physics? Basically, thermal physics is concerned with any transfer of heat among various objects. So essentially, I just put in this picture here of metal, probably a blacksmith is working with this and he's making it into something. I just put it in there because it looks really cool. And it's super hot, right? It's glowing yellow, it's glowing red. Uh, incidentally, the yellow and the white here is hotter than the red, just in case you were curious. Um, so that's one example of heat transfer going on. Um, you've got another example here. What is that? Well, it's basically a glacier. It's ice. It's a whole bunch of ice that's melting and then the the water is flowing off through here. So basically heat energy is coming in from the sun, it's being absorbed by the ice, and in this time of year that the heat energy is enough to make the ice melt. So the water runs off there. So that's basically what thermal physics is concerned with. It's concerned with uh, heat being transferred in any kind of way between any kind of items. Um, so that's the basic idea. So in talking about thermal physics, we have to kind of start at basics of matter. Now I'm sure probably you have seen something like this before in a science class, um, but here what we've got is we've got several different states of matter. We're going to start with the solid state, right? So here's an example of a solid. You've got a nice crystal structure. I believe this is a zoomed in close up view of some crystals. Possibly it's salt crystals, it might be sugar crystals, or it might be some other kind of crystal, but it doesn't really matter. You just can, you can tell that um, these things have a very clear, very defined structure to them. Uh, solids are like that. They're usually hard, but sometimes a solid can be soft. Um, in all cases, the solids have a very clear, very defined structure, right? So here we've got, that was a crystal, here we've got metals. Metals are another example of a very uh, uh, common solid material. Um, crystals and metals make up most solids. Not all, but most. Um, so there you go. There's some various pieces of metal in different shapes, but each of them has a very specific shape. So the point about solids is that solids have a clearly defined shape, clear, uh, clear size, a uh, very definite volume and a very definite structure. So all those things are true of solids. All right, liquids are different from solids, right? They have some similarities, but they are different. Here you've got the ocean, an ocean wave. It's flowing. It is not a specific shape, right? Different waves have different shapes and sizes and so on. Just the ocean sometimes could be calm. It can be, you know, so liquids, as you know, I'm sure, uh, they take, they do not have a clear shape. The only time they take on a shape is when you put them into something. So a big beaker full of liquid, right? The liquid takes on the shape of the beaker. Same here. Uh, I don't think this one has anything in it, but anyways, um, the liquid takes on the shape of its container, right? So liquids, they, now you can't change the volume of a liquid, at least not by much. So in that sense, it's similar to a solid. They have a definite volume but no definite shape. They take the same shape as whatever container they're in and they flow freely. If you want to pour them out of the container, you can do that. Solids don't flow like that. They keep their shape. And that brings us to gases. So here I've got a picture of chlorine gas that's in a jar and the jar is sealed with a lid. So in there, that's chlorine gas. Don't breathe chlorine gas if you ever had the opportunity. It is toxic. All right, so don't do that. You, it will not, you'll not have a good day. Um, but I picked chlorine because you can actually see it, right? It's got color. Um, so with it in there, you can see it. Um, here's a picture. It's not really, you can't see the gas, the air, right? The atmosphere because the atmosphere is made up of gases, you can't see it in this picture, but at least you can see the effect of it, right? Because why are these trees bent like this? It's because of a breeze, a very constant, like seasonal, all the time breeze that goes in 
that direction from right to left across the picture here there's a breeze probably it's blowing it may not be blowing in this picture but you can tell the trees bend that way because that's the way the wind blows so um, anyways what am I getting at here gases they have no definite volume they have no definite shape so they will fill up whatever container you put them in completely. That's why this is all full. You can tell the whole thing has chlorine gas in it. The, the chlorine gas will fill up, expand to fill up all the available space. All right, and they also, like, like liquids, they flow freely. So let's summarize, right? Summaries are a nice, nice, concise place where you can get all of the info. So here's the summary in a table form, all right? What's the state? What's the phase of matter? Solid? Does it have a definite volume? Yes, it does. Does it have a definite shape? Yes, it does. Liquid? Does it have a definite volume? Yes. Definite shape? No. It takes on the shape of its container. Gas? Definite volume? No. It will take up all of the available space. And does it have a definite shape? No. It has no shape at all. All right. Only if it put it into a container, and then it will fill up the container and take on that shape. Alrighty, so those are the vital foundational principles you need to know about states of matter, and that's the foundation that we need to know for talking about thermal physics. So that's it for this video. We'll be moving on to the next one.